Hi everyone, thanks for watching Lori Wired, and in this video we're going to be looking at how we can write a Hello World program in RISC-V assembly. So I'm going to break this up into two parts. The first one, we're simply going to be writing the bare bones of a program and exiting that program. And in the second part, I'm going to actually add the Hello World string, and we're just going to print that to the console. So for some background into the RISC-V instruction set architecture, this is actually a free and open source architecture. This is in contrast to other ones that you might be familiar with, such as x86 or ARM, which are entirely proprietary. Additionally, it is RISC-based, which is the same as ARM, and RISC stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computer. Uh, some more background into it, it comes in 32-bit, 64-bit, and even 128-bit architectures, but today we're going to be focusing on the 64-bit version of RISC-V. So let's jump right in and see how we can write our Hello World program. So I'm going to open up my virtual machine, and this is an ARM-based virtual machine host that I'm going to be running QueenU on to actually run our RISC-V code, but you should be able to use the host of your choice and run this in QueenU just fine since it's a really small program we're going to be running, so no problems with performance. And let's create a new file that's actually going to hold our assembly code that comprises our program. So I'm going to do vi hello dot s and I'm going to be using vim to actually write down this code, but you can feel free to use the text editor of your choice. First thing is we need to make our starting point visible to the linker. So let's make this global. So I'm going to do i to enter insert mode. And then it is dot global underscore start. And then we're going to actually create the text segment. Inside of this segment, all of our actual instructions, so our actual executable code, is going to be stored in this location. So all of those different assembly instructions that we're going to be adding that actually make up RISC-V are going to go in this particular segment. So we need to remember dot section dot text. And below this, we can add our start label with a colon. And now here we can actually begin adding our actual assembly instructions. So all I want to do in this one is simply exit the program. So I'm going to do something and I'm going to call this exit system call. So I'm going to pull up I think what I'll do first is go to the man page for the exit system call so we can see what arguments we need to have set up to actually trigger this exit, which is going to cause our program to exit cleanly. So I'm going to do Linux man page exit. And let's just choose this one right here. And what we need to know is this exit call, we can't simply take this function and throw it inside of our program like we would if this was C or C++ or any other language, we actually need to set up our registers to have the values that will actually trigger the processor to call this particular system call. So the first thing is we're going to have to have our status argument. This is going to be the return value of the program. And then the second thing, we actually need to set up a number. And that number is going to tell us which system call we're actually trying to call right now, since there are a lot of different system calls that we could trigger. So let's go over and see what we need to set up our registers to be like to actually trigger this. So I'm going to go over to our specifications document for our RISC-V assembly. And let's look at what our different processor register options are for this instruction set architecture. So the processor reg registers are located physically close to the CPU. So these are going to be temporary values. And since we're in a 64-bit operating system here, these are going to be 64 bits in total for the actual size of the registers. On the left hand side, we have one option, these options right here, these x0, x1, x2, etc. 
But we actually have additional options, these ABI names that I'm actually going to be using in our assembly programming today. And these are actually just easier for us to remember as programmers. So for example, I'm gonna take these A0 through A7 registers and know that these are related to my function arguments that I'm gonna be passing when I'm actually triggering these particular system calls. So this saves me from having to remember these X10, X11, and instead I can actually just write A0 and A1 instead. And ABI stands for Application Binary Interface. So now we found which registers we're actually going to be using. So let's pass in these different values that are going to trigger our exit system call. So if you remember, the first parameter in this exit system call is this status. So we actually need to pass an integer value into this register that will signify the return value of the program. So I'm just going to return two or something so that we can actually see the return value and make sure that our code actually worked. So let's set that up and let's go back to our code. Oops. And we're going to use an instruction that's actually going to load this constant value into our A0 register. The instruction is going to be li for load immediate. And then the first argument register, which is going to be passing in that status code. And then I'm just going to pass in the value 2 so that we can know that it actually worked. And I'll print that out once we've run this program to make sure we're getting the expected output. And then the next one we need is we actually need to have the system call number that's going to tell us which number is actually specifying the, that exit system call. So I'm going to go over to a second reference manual. And this right here is going to list all of the corresponding numbers and their system calls that they map to. And let's scroll down. Let's find our RISC-V architecture. Looks like we have risk 5 64 bit right here. And remember, we're trying to call this exit system call. So we need to scroll down and find that. So this is in alphabetical order. So we have our exit system call right here. And then let's go over to our risk 64 bit. Looks like the actual value is 93. So that's the value that we need to pass in to our other register. So if I go back to my specifications document, this is just something you're going to have to remember. But the actual system call register is going to be this A7 register. So you're just going to have to remember that the syscall code goes into A7. And what is our system call code? It's going to be 93 if we're trying to call this right system or this exit system call. So I'm going to do load immediate. That A7 register, which is our syscall register, and then the constant value 93. And then there's one more special instruction that we're going to need to actually trigger this system call. And this is going to be e call. So this e call is actually going to trigger an interrupt, which is going to tell the processor to look at the value that's in this A7 register and see what system call that that value maps to. And then it's going to take the different arguments that are passed into your argument registers. Here we just have one, which is the value 2, which is our status code that we passed into the first argument register. And this is just going to simply exit the program and return 2. So why don't we save this and actually run this so we can prove that this is actually going to happen. So I'm going to do escape to get out of insert mode, colon WQ to save my program. And now I actually need to assemble this program and generate my executable. And the command is going to be risk v64 since I'm running the risk 5 64 bit architecture dash unknown since I'm not targeting any particular vendor dash elf. Elf is just the main executable binary for Linux applications. Elf stands for executable and linkable format. So this is just going to be an executable that we can actually run on my Linux VM right here. And then we need dash as to assemble. So we're going to have our dash o, which is going to be our object binary output. And I'm just going to call this hello dot o. And then we actually need to pass in our program that has our actual RISC-V assembly instructions. So I'm going to pass in hello.s. This is going to assemble our program. Hopefully, no mistakes. Looks good so far. And then we need one more command. 
So I'm just gonna type this one more time, risk B, 64, unknown, elf. And then the command is actually gonna change to LD. So this hello.o binary was actually generated by this command. And now we just actually need to create the executable. So I'm gonna do dash O one more time. And I'll call this hello, and this is our executable name. Now we need to pass in this new hello.o file. So hello.o looks good. And here is our newly created executable file. So if I do dot slash hello and I run it, and then I'll do echo dollar sign question mark. And this is simply going to print the return value of the last program to exit, which was this. And here, sure enough, we have the value two. So if I show you my hello dot s, remember we passed the constant value two into this a zero register, which was our actual status code for the exit system call. So in the next video, I'm actually going to add our hello world string and we're going to call the write system call to print that to the console. And I'll also get into a little bit more about the details of this load immediate instruction and all of the different assembly instructions that we have available to us according to the specifications document for the RISC-V instruction set architecture. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone. In this video, we saw how we could create a new RISC-V assembly program from scratch. And in this, all we did was simply call the exit system call. And we passed in the necessary arguments into our register argument values. We also saw how RISC is an open source and free instruction set architecture and how it can come in 32-bit, 64-bit, or even 128-bit architectures. So thanks so much for watching Lori Wired, everyone, and I'll catch you in the next video.